Welcome back to the class on Neural Dynamics. This is part 4. In part 3, we have discussed the leaky integrating fire model. In the leaky integrating fire model, everything is linear. Incoming pulses cause responses that are summed up linearly. Everything is linear except at the threshold. Now, in this class, I would like to generalize the idea of integrating fire models to the case of nonlinear integrating fire models. However, before we can do so, I would like to go back to the leaky integrating fire model and look at it from a slightly different perspective. So, what we, what we have here is a linear differential equation, and I've started a plot here which has on the vertical axis, it has ddtu, which is essentially the left-hand side of the equation, and uh, I can express this by, and I plot this as a function of the voltage u. So in order to know what the, what the derivative ddtu is as a function of the voltage, I just have to evaluate the right-hand side of the equation. u minus u rest is a linear function, so this gives this linear line over there. Suppose for the moment that the current is zero. Now let's look at the following situation. Suppose that my momentary voltage is here. It's at a value above the crossing point. So now, how can, what, what, what can I do with this plot? With this plot I can look at the change. I evaluate ddtu ddtu is negative, it's below zero. The change is negative, that means u, the voltage, gets smaller. I go downward. Let's look at this in this plot here. If the voltage is high, it goes down. Now let's look at a situation where the voltage is low. Say the voltage is here, ddtu is positive, Therefore, the voltage increases. The only point where it does not change is this point here, which is the resting potential. So for the leaky integrated fire model, we have already analyzed mathematically the properties of the neuron. We have found the fixed point, we have found the resting potential as the stationary solution in the absence of input. What I'm doing here is a graphical solution. This kind of graphical solution is, of course, an overkill for a linear differential equation, because for a linear equation we can write down the solution. However, it will allow us to go from the leaky integrating fire model to nonlinear integrating fire models. So far, we have looked at the case of constant input. The input was zero. Let's stick with constant input, but go to finite input. Again, I plot on the vertical axis, I plot ddtu. The right, as a function of the voltage, ddtu is more or less the same, except that now I have a constant value, r times i0, which is positive. As a result, this straight line is shifted vertically upwards. Suppose I have a certain voltage, like the voltage here. I can now evaluate the function. ddtu is positive, therefore it will flow. The voltage will increase further. Positive ddtu, positive change, increase in the voltage. The voltage in will increase further, but at some point it will hit the threshold. At this point it's reset to some reset value, which, say, could be zero or some other value, ur. As a result, for positive voltage, I have a flow towards the threshold, it's a spike, it's reset, flow towards the threshold, spike, reset, and so forth. So the graphical picture allows us to discuss this linear differential equation in the presence of a threshold in a rather transparent fashion. So let's use this now for a generalization. 
So instead of a linear equation, we now have an arbitrary nonlinear function f of u. As before, if the neuron is firing, it's going to be reset to some value, which I will call ur in the future. So this is a similar picture as before, except that now, instead of a straight line, I have some curved function f of u. For the case of input equal to zero, I still have a flow. The flow is positive, it's negative, which means this is a stable fixed point. Now, if I have a positive current, the green curve is shifted upwards and I always have to flow towards the threshold. Let's return to the case of current equal to zero. I said already I have a flow towards this value here, which is the resting value and it's a stable fixed point. Interestingly here, there's another point. Once the voltage is above this value, it will not flow back to the resting value, but it, flow, it will flow autonomously towards the threshold. At the threshold, it's going to be reset to the resting value, uh, to, to some reset value, which may or may not be identical to the rest value. Now, the fact that we have this additional fixed point, I have a first fixed point corresponding to the resting potential, and then I have this additional fixed point, means that the summation is no longer linear. At some point, if the voltage is beyond this value, it will autonomously flow towards the threshold, where it's reset, and then the whole process starts again. Now let's discuss this a little bit further. What are typical choices for this function f of u of the nonlinearity? A first choice is the quadratic function, which has a resting value here and this additional fixed point over there. This is the flow pattern pattern. If the voltage reaches the threshold, theta r, r for reset, theta reset, then the voltage is reset to some value ur. Now, for the case of constant input, the whole curve shifts upward, and if the input is strong enough, I have a flow of the voltage towards the threshold, at which point it's reset to ur. This is the first choice, the quadratic integrated fire model. Now here comes a second possibility. It's the exponential integrated fire model. It's a linear function over here. And then it bends over, and it bends over rapidly. Exponentially fast, it will go towards infinity. Now let's look at the situation for constant input. Basically, as before, if the input is strong enough, I will have a flow towards the threshold. If the threshold is hit, the membrane voltage is reset to a lower value and the whole process restarts. The quadratic integrand fire and the exponential integrand fire are two famous neuron models which have both been studied in the field of computational neuroscience. So here again, the linear or leaky integrated fire model replaced by some arbitrary nonlinearity. In the case of the exponential integrated fire model, this nonlinearity has a linear part which is identical to the situation of the leaky integrated fire model, but then comes the nonlinearity, which means that the curve bends over rapidly. If the reset threshold is hit, then the voltage is put back to a value ur. Now, I've changed the notation slightly. I added this little r when I, to the threshold, theta reset. And the reason is that we need to talk about the notion of threshold in this model. So I would like to pose the following question. 
where is the firing threshold in this nonlinear integrated fire model? Okay. So suppose I start with some voltage, for example, a voltage here. Voltage here means I evaluate the change. DDTU is negative. It will flow backwards towards the resting potential. That's what we see here. If I have a voltage on this side of the crossing point, then it will automatically flow towards the threshold, which means the voltage will, on its own, increase further. Now you can repeat the argument. Suppose I start here. The voltage will still flow down. If I start here, it will flow up. So this value here is critical. This crossing point defines a sort of firing threshold, the firing threshold for different initial conditions. If the voltage is here and there is no further current, I is zero, if it's here, it will go up. If it's here, it will go down. So this is like a firing threshold, theta, for the voltage. And this is different from theta r. Theta r is the numerical threshold for the reset. Its value is somewhat arbitrary. I could put it further up. I can put it slightly further down. It doesn't really matter because the increase of the voltage is so rapid that it will blow up very rapidly, it's, it's, it's a fraction of a millisecond, the difference between a threshold here or there. So, we can say that if I have different initial conditions, then this acts like a threshold. Now, different initial co conditions correspond to a short pulse input. As we have seen in in earlier part of this week's lecture, a pulse input just makes a jump of the membrane potential to a new value. If this jump is to a value below theta, we will go back. If the jump is to a value above theta, the voltage will increase further until it's reset numerically. Now let's look at the situation of constant input. If the input is strong enough, the curve is shifted upwards so that there's no crossing point Therefore, the flow is always towards the right. Again, there is a reset threshold, and the trajectory will move regularly towards the reset threshold, and then it's reset. So the question now is, at which point will the neuron enter in the regime of repetitive firing. Well, it will enter in the regime of repetitive firing as soon as no fixed point remains, as soon as the green curve is above the zero line. Imagine we increase the current from zero to some positive value. The green curve shifts up. At the beginning, I have a fixed point here, another one there. I shift the green curve up at some point the fixed points move together, they merge, and then they disappear. And this is the moment when repetitive firing starts. Just before the fixed points disappear, they would still touch the zero line about here. So this is the critical value of the voltage for which repetitive firing sets in under a constant but positive input current. Now in this figure, where does it correspond to? Well, note that the green curve gives du dt, it gives the derivative. If you are down here, the derivative is big, large slope upwards. Now this is the point where the slope is minimal, about here, if, before it turns up again and will take up speed. So this value is about here, in this region here, minimal slope. That would correspond to the threshold for constant input. Now note that this threshold here for constant input 
is different from the threshold I, find over, I have found over there, the threshold for pulse input or threshold for initial conditions. To summarize, where is the firing threshold? Well, for a leaky integrated fire model, it's simple. There is only one threshold. The threshold for the reset is the same as the threshold for pulse input. It's the same as the threshold for constant input. For nonlinear integrated fire models, the picture is more complicated. The neuron has a formal threshold for the reset, which is of minor importance. What is important is the intrinsic threshold. And this intrinsic threshold is different for the case of pulse input, initial condition. It corresponds to the crossing point at the intersection point of the green curve. It's different for pulse input and for constant input. Therefore, a nonlinear integrated fire model does not have a unique firing threshold. The concept of a threshold is an abstraction. And if in this class we often talk about a threshold, then this is indeed a simplification. Real neurons will have a different threshold if we observe them under pulse injection or constant current injection, and yet a different threshold if we use a, a slow current ramp. Now I invite you to spend some time with the exercises that uh, should trigger some thinking about the different versions of nonlinear neuron models. So please spend five to ten minutes with the exercises and then move on to the last part of this week's lecture.